So you want to get into sim racing? I'm scared it might be too expensive? It kind of is, but don't worry. We're going to go over that. Really quick, I would like to say, uh, shout out to Dave Cam, who I've been watching pretty religiously now, uh, as of late, for sim racing. Uh, he does something when he's uh, using equipment and whatnot for the first time in videos that I actually uh, respect and kind of uh, relate to, basically saying, I'm not a tech reviewer, you know, I'm just, I'm a sim racer like everyone else, and I'm just using this equipment, I'm going to tell you how I you know, how it, how it feels and whatnot. And uh, I'm going to kind of take that same approach in the sense of I only know about what I've used so far. I haven't used a whole lot, but I have genuinely used, like, bottom-of-the-barrel kind of stuff-ish to entry level in most respective markets to quite recently, like, a $15,000-plus uh, simulator at work. So we're going to go over all of that. Today, at least from my knowledge, again, this is my opinion, this is from what I've done over the last few months, basically, and uh, kind of throughout my sim racing, I guess, esque style career so far. So, with that being said, um, we'll continue now. I wanted to add this in. Technically, this wasn't part of my script writing, but after reviewing everything, I wanted to throw this in. Anyway, moving on. I've had a wheel of some sort for the last, like realistically three years now uh but i haven't like seriously been sim racing until r rather recently about six months ago is when i really really got into it most of my early experience at least like over the last like three years was mainly with gran turismo sport and i racing or at least for when i had the entry level wheel or at least something that i would consider an entry level wheel we're gonna go over that in a little bit and another thing i've played a lot of racing games over the years i'm not an expert in any i don't claim to be any or an expert in any realistically, but uh, I have enjoyed quite a few throughout my lifetime. Uh, I can say though right now, iRacing is number one in my heart, but that is just because I'm a massive competitor. Uh, kind of a jerk sometimes about it, I do apologize. I do admit fault most of the time when it is my fault. <laughs> anyway, that's my like tidbits about me as a racer, but uh, realistically today is about what you want to do to get into sim racing. Uh, I've never really gotten like this depth into something. Uh, unless I'm talking to like a friend. Finally, I do have a couple of videos about my current setup right now with what equipment I do use, and maybe I'll put some links to those in the description below. But realistically, I'm not like super happy with those. That's why I'm making this video because technically this is like the fourth setup, quote unquote, video that I've done. But uh, anyway, let's start with uh, what kind of racer you would want to be. And you might be asking, what What do you mean by that? What do you mean by what type of racer? And I mean like. Do you want to drift? Do you want to race real cars? Do you want to make your own kind of cars and race them in weird places? Do you like rally or rally cross or race like you did back when maybe you were a kid or maybe even now as a kid in the old arcade days? At least for me, they were old arcade days. There are tons of different setups that you can use to like simple wheel and pedal setup to a controller if that's your thing uh mostly those are the two main platforms that i see for uh racing games at least in my sphere or at least the things that influence me not necessarily my sphere of influence is that how it works i don't know but some games feel a little better when using a wheel setup versus a controller uh gran turismo for example was one of these games but uh it has been a while since i've used a controller for gran turismo and speaking of, we have GC7 here on my trusty old PS4, and I won't lie to you, but uh, I was a little lazy, and I didn't hook up the capture card to the old TV here, but hopefully my camera picks up everything, as you're watching right now, and uh, we'll time it. But uh, I've been doing lots of Watkins Glen, as you can see, on iRacing recently, and I've been loving it, and by recently I mean like a few weeks ago it was on there, but anyway... I think the track is super fun. Um, I think like my fastest time uh, on iRacing in the Mercedes AMG GT3 2020 revision, because that's important, was a 145.8. And I'm going to try and do that on GT7. Uh, GT7 doesn't have the 2020 revision for the AMG, so take this 2016 version with a grain of salt. The 2016 mark is on iRacing, but uh, I just don't see the use in buying it at this point since I'm not a collector, and uh, nor does it really pop up in any events anymore over the 2020 revision. 
and it's currently three bucks technically on the store at the moment so i mean it's not like it's really expensive but at the same time it's just like what's the point i can really only use it for like time trials or if i want to drive that one again in any way i really like the 2020 one so anyway most of the catch-up that i did because uh i had to catch up a lot to actually get watkins glen but um yeah most of it was done on a controller because i was just sitting late night and um you'll see what setup i had to work with uh when i i switch off from here and go to my technically first ever setup either way it's all going to be preference but just for example here i'm just a little bit faster on the wheel and pedals than i am on a controller as for the equipment that you just saw there uh that's what i would consider very much an entry level setup uh that was a logitech g29 and we're gonna go into it pretty quickly right now but technically the g29 starts out at 400 bucks but I know that's a lot, and even then, I'm pretty confused because I'm pretty sure when I bought it, it was like 250 bucks. But after some research, it does appear on sale quite often for anywhere between 250 and 300 dollars. Even right now, at the time of recording, it was 255 dollars. And there's like a bigger bundle too that you can get with the six-speed shifter, which I got later and never used, and even some headphones. Uh, I think that one was like 300 or 350 or something like that. I can't fully uh, remember or recall. There are cheaper wheels in this for sure, but I can't say that I've necessarily used those ones on like a regular basis or at least enough to talk about them. Um, but realistically, you can trust names like Thrustmaster, Logitech, uh, Fanatec, or Fanatic, however you pronounce it, um, Huskveld, which I know I destroyed that one, but they do sponsor a series actually in iRacing, which is really nice. I do race in that every now and again. Uh, Air SimCube, too. They're a name that's pretty known um I'm, I'm missing a ton of them but realistically like if you're gonna buy uh any kind of kit and it's one of those like a hundred percent those are gonna be fine at least if they're brand new i don't know about second hand don't quote me on that one i'll have some links down below by the way like for everything that i'm talking about or hopefully i'm gonna try to don't hold me to it but i'm gonna try to eventually i will update it it will be there for now what you're looking at though is the G29, and this is the setup that I had. Uh, this was my very first wheel and pedal setup, and I've done a couple reviews on it. So let me save you a few extra minutes and uh, kind of just read off the bullet points here. Now, uh, G29 is a gear-driven wheel, which is similar to belt-driven wheels. Uh, they kind of implement the same idea, which basically just drives gears or belts to turn a motor, which basically gives you the feedback. They have relatively two newton meters of force, at least from the research that I've done which is essentially little to no force feedback, which uh, is super important so you can feel when the tires start to go and whatnot. So depending on your preference or your price range, uh, the belt or gear driven wheels are probably going to be for you if you're looking for something on the lower end of the $400 range for like basically the entire kit or at least wheel and brake and throttle as far as the pedals go. Because some of them don't come with a clutch. Another thing to mention, too, is that sometimes these gear and belt-driven wheels uh, don't necessarily tell you that they require maintenance, but it's kind of highly advised to maintain them, or at least special care for some of these, whereas something like a direct-drive wheel doesn't necessarily need as much care, but you do need to handle it well. But we'll keep those in mind from basically here on out, and... Um, Speaking of the direct drive wheels, this is where we get into the $500 plus range and beyond and what you're seeing in front of me. We're going to go over these now. Now, I do have a newer entry level model of a direct drive uh, from Fanatec, and it's the CSL Direct Drive or DD, which is priced at $349 just for the base alone. And this comes with a maximum of 5 newton meters of force out of the box, but for an extra $150, you can get the 150 watt 8 newton meter boost kit. Uh, I don't have that. It's totally fine. Uh, I currently use this at max, and it's more than enough for me currently. Um, you may have also caught that I said that it was $349, and for the extra $150, you can get the boost kit. But I, if you were listening, I did also say that was just the base, which is that right there. It doesn't come with the pedals or the steering wheel. As a quick example of a budget direct drive setup, uh, when I bought all this, I pre-ordered it, I believe, back in early 2021, or whenever when the pre-order started. The base was $350, the McLaren GT3 
steering wheel was $200. The pedals were an older model. They're the V2s. They don't come with a clutch. Um, those were $80. And that was kind of kind of it. So realistically, here we're looking at $630 bucks before tax and shipping. Um, but um, there's actually more. There's There's more to this. Like I said, that was the the budget, but we're technically still not done. But just to comment on some things which you might want to think about, um, there are the multiple, obviously, tiers of pedals, which I highly recommend giving a look at, or at least looking into the load cell if you're going to go for Fanatec. Um, I have used the load cell. It is amazing, and I need to get it. I believe that's like an extra 200 bucks. Yeah, these ones will run you another 200 bucks. Uh, I want one, but not really here yet. So like I said, we're sitting at $630 without shipping or tax yet, but we're still technically not done. We have no way of mounting it yet. You don't have a seat. Where, where are you going to put it? This thing moves a lot. You can't just put it on a desk and let it go. For $30, you can get the CSL direct drive desk mount, which... If you can run with that and your desk is strong enough, that's pretty good. Or you can chance it in one of two ways. You can build your own rig, which some people do it out of wood. Some people have access to metal and, or at least know how to. I don't know. I wouldn't be able to do it on my own. I mean, it would take me a few tries realistically, but whatever. Or you can do what I did and you can just buy a random rig online and just risk the biscuit for $200. And like I said earlier on in the beginning of this video, uh, some of these setups can go like for astronomical prices. Formula One uses like multi-million dollar setups, but that, and then again, that's Formula One. But even then, um, just like like I was saying earlier at my work, there's a fifteen thousand dollar five hundred just in the parts alone, roughly, uh, setup there, and that's with all the kit and everything. That's not including the computers. Or the monitors or the stands or anything else like that or the games that's just the rig that's just the rig and the base it's insane and to break those like more expensive setups down or at least the one that i have at my work um it's like twenty five hundred dollars for all of the actual racing equipment uh like the the base the wheel and the pedals um depending on some of the other upgrades that they got it could be upwards of like the 3k range but that's for at least like the racing stuff the base that's at work it does have like almost full access motion and the seat does tilt go what is it yaw pitch all that fun stuff um that's like 10 grand that's the next level racing one and we do have some butt kickers uh for the seat vibration as well they go through like the sound and like the engine noise basically it picks up on the engine noise of the game and rumbles or at least it tries to mimic like the rumble of an engine it's a really cool setup realistically but again i don't have that kind of money i did however have about Two hundred and fifty dollars, including the shipping and taxes and whatnot and i did order basically an unbranded uh kind of rig from Alibaba. If you don't know what Alibaba is, by the way, it's basically a place where you can buy like bulk items for what is essentially either almost at cost or wholesale. So you can basically turn around and sell them for a profit. And this rig um, is found on several websites. And this is the old version, technically. I have, uh, I think, I believe the V2 of what now has a V3 version of that, which... Maybe I'll put it on screen here. Uh, I don't necessarily think I got it off of the Vivor website, but technically that's what this one is right now. I keep hitting this, but the seat and everything that I'm in, the rig that I'm in right now is the Vivor. Um, don't know if it actually has any other name. I don't know if it actually got it off the website, but it was about 250 bucks and setup was relatively okay. I've had to redo it several times, but maybe that's just because of my own incompetence. I don't know. But realistically, for those keeping track, let's subtract the 50 bucks for the taxes and the shipping and whatnot. And um, anyone keeping track, that's about 830 bucks for my total on just what I'm sitting in currently. That's not cheap. It really isn't. But regardless, $830 before shipping and taxes and all that, unless I'm buying things locally, which I didn't, I didn't really have a way to. 
Um, I easily paid over $1,000 for this budget build. And I can really say that this is a budget build because everything is considered entry level. The base is considered an entry level product. It was one of the first actually consumer available entry level products on the market. Anything under six, seven, eight hundred dollars was like a miracle for direct drive. And even then it does have the extra boost kit and whatnot. And that's just how it is. And there's a few more that are on the market now for roughly the same price. I haven't tried any of them, but I've seen good reviews. I have, however, tried everything that I have talked about so far, though, at least for the most part. And um, I feel confident in my reviews of those so far. So, I mean, you can take them how you want, but that's my opinion. And I can say this, like, especially about some of these. Logitech like wheels, they do the job for some people. And honestly, a lot of people love them. They're super simple and they have a really, really like ease of installation. That's just, it's really not hard to just bolt them onto a table, really. It's not even bolting either. They have screws. It's great. Clamps, actually, not screws, but you turn screws to tighten the clamps. But either way, it's a huge selling point for all entry level consumers. And even then, especially around Christmas time when they're on sale. But when you're getting to the, the mounting and the, the rig situation, uh, it does become a whole nother beast. Like I said, this is like $200 and on the high end, they're upwards of $10,000 for a full motion rig. I mean, that's, that's insane, actually. You can kind of get around it by building your own out of wood or metal, like I said earlier. And some people just start off with the $70 little wheel stand and pedal kit setup. You can spend 250 bucks on a seat and set of rails, or you can pick one up from a junkyard and build your own again, like I said, if you want, or even you can strap actual seat to this, what I'm in right now. It actually has the real rails and everything. But regardless, most people, when they get serious enough, they'll shell out the extra, realistically, anywhere f between four and $800 just for the actual rig itself. Um, something like GT Omega, for example, is something that I really wouldn't mind having. I would really actually enjoy it. And it's super adjustable and whatnot. And it's really nice. It's it, you know, assuming that you're at least on, on PC and whatnot, I mean, a lot of console people can use this. I just, uh, I guess this is going to sound elitist in a way, but I just, I feel like some PC uh, Sims are just a, a bit superior. But again, my opinion. Sorry, but that's me. And again, overall, this is just the same equipment. We still haven't really talked about, uh, well, I mean, I guess I kind of just did on it, but PCs versus consoles. Uh, consoles, you know what you're getting into with how much they are and whatnot. And We'll get into those. We might as well just get into those right now because they're quite lighter. So really quick, I just want to preface by saying uh, I haven't played on Xbox necessarily with a wheel and pedals and whatnot, um, but I used to play games like Juiced 1 and 2, a few of the Forzas, uh, when I had time as a kid and whatnot. All of that was on controller, so that's my experience with at least like Xbox racers. Um, or Sims, sorry. Uh, PS4 is when I got my first wheel and whatnot, or at least what I could, what I would consider a wheel and pedals setup. And I started out on GT Sport, which if you played it, you know that that was sometimes a dumpster fire, sometimes it was fun, but most of the time it was a dumpster fire. But you don't need a crazy multi-thousand dollar setup to race on consoles, and I think that's a super, super massive selling point to a lot of people. Currently, uh, I still can't get into a race on GT7 multiplayer on the PS4, but I do have the PS4, like, maybe second iteration of it at this point. Um, I don't know. We do have a PS5 in the house. Haven't tried it, but, yeah, what's the point? And like I said, you don't need a multi-thousand dollar setup on consoles, but, I mean, if you can swing it, I would recommend it just because it gets you prepared and it gets you into it. But I highly recommend looking at the compatibility of uh, your devices. Like me, I was a little bit overzealous, and I didn't... Um, Sorry, impatient is the proper word there. That's the one. I didn't wait for the GT uh, direct drive, which is the one that works on PlayStation, so I had to buy a little doohickey and whatnot uh, from a secret company. Well, it's not really secret, but I just can't remember the name of them. But I had to buy a little dongle from a company that basically spoofs this uh, base into something else. But 
everything else works on it and it works perfectly fine uh, i just feel like it's a bit kind of a hassle to go from here where my computer is and whatnot over there to where the playstation is as we use that for our media and entertainment but realistically the logitech or an entry level like thrustmaster for example are perfect for games like gran turismo and forza or any of the console racers even a set of courses on console now which is like a massive win considering that it's pretty respected in the pc sim racing community as well but if you want the like i guess like best experience possible i think you're gonna have to go on pc but then again if you want the best best experience possible you're gonna need a pretty beefy pc moving on to the last topic basically is going to be pcs and pc sims um obviously you're gonna need a pc for this if you're new to the whole pc market um they're expensive <laughs> realistically uh you can get a budget build uh anywhere between like five to eight hundred dollars will be pretty decent to run something like iRacing at medium to low specs um a set of course the same thing um but don't expect to get any like realism out of it or or anything like that but anything over a thousand dollars you're probably going to be at a pretty decent level uh, especially with iRacing because it doesn't really require a whole lot and again i don't really recommend it but the option is there you can finance pre-built from some of these companies i would say just really do some research before you maybe do any of that and technically since we're talking about pcs and even consoles let's get into the whole monitor situation as well or a tv monitors can really gouge you or they can be pretty inexpensive same thing with tvs i think we don't really need to get too too much into that unless you're thinking about going a triple monitor setup for your sim rig which is a thing and uh, again if you have the money i would highly recommend it also considering where i work virtual reality is a thing i have also tried it and it is really fun especially on a motion rig it's pretty immersive and coming back to triple monitors you can basically configure it anyway but realistically i think it's kind of like a mostly like 180 field of view kind of thing there i mean essentially how you're looking at it now when you sit in your car you can kind of do the same thing with a triple monitor setup it's also not supported by every game that's out there so be wary of that again do your research a lot of this is doing your own research be wary of that and i know i said pcs and monitors and all that were like gonna be the last thing but realistically we're even also talking about the sims here uh not like the game the sims but the actual simulators the racing simulators uh gran turismo is essentially you you buy the game and then all the content is free now uh they don't require you to buy it anymore Forza, I believe they make you buy it and whatnot, or at least depending on the franchise. I don't, I believe it's kind of the same thing like in Dirt as well. Uh, Assetto Corsa is also the same way, as well as iRacing. All of them have a different kind of model uh, as far as like paying goes, but we'll get into a couple of those and some of them you're not going to like. Games like iRacing are free, but they're subscription based and they have a heavy amount of microtransactions considering that it's free, but you are paying monthly for a subscription. That monthly subscription is $12.99 a month if you decide to go that way, or it does kind of deplete in tiers if you're buying a 3, 6, 9, or 12 month, I believe, package. There is a lot of free content also, um, uh, at least on iRacing, for example, the MX-5, which is the first road series thing that, uh, you know, everything everyone does. Uh, I mean, I still do it every now and again when I kind of feel like I need something to have fun and drive in that I can just chuck around and not worry about getting an off track or two in they also have some late models for oval racing and dirt oval racing as well as like i believe it's the volkswagen for the irx if you want to do like rallycross which is pretty cool if they have that selection tracks are usually around 11 dollars as well as the cars depending on what it is depending on if it's like heavily licensed or not like you can actually buy lewis hamilton's uh what is it 2019 championship winning car because he didn't or no 2020 yeah he didn't win in 2021 anyway when you play in iRacing and you actually start gaining rating and your license increases you actually realize that you can't increase your license rating anymore unless you buy into the next series of tracks and car so it does get a little bit difficult and it does get a bit expensive that is something that uh, we all kind of have to deal with, unfortunately. But yeah, it's a thing. 
I don't know how much I've actually spent on the game. I really don't want to know. But what I do know is I can race in about 10 series full season, which is, if I'm remembering correctly, 10 races per season. And not all of them are on free tracks. So, like we were talking about earlier, that's a lot of $11 charges. I can also do it in about two or four cars, depending on the series, because uh, I like choices. And that's just iRacing. Like I said earlier, Gran Turismo is basically you buy the game and it's free updates. Uh, DLC as far as Forza is concerned, and you have to buy that game. I can't really speak on a whole lot of other things, but as far as PC goes, there's not really like cheap, cheap alternatives. But I mean, if you're okay with paying 9 bucks a month, like most people are okay with paying 15 bucks a month for their favorite MMO, Final Fantasy, well, then this is okay for you. Plus, the MX-5 Fix Series is really fun, and you really learn how to uh, race in iRacing when you race in that league. Aceta Corsa and Aceta Corsa Competizione also have a great selection of cars and tracks. Um, ACC, or at least Aceta Corsa, is pretty heavily moddable. Um, not pretty. It is just heavily moddable. And even then, uh, I don't have any footage of it now, but there have been a couple times where I've driven on uh, some of the community basically uploaded maps which is uh, like the one gun highway uh in tokyo and or at least in japan i don't know if that's actually the name of it or the thing but you understand what i'm talking about people will put like toges in there and everything and that's like the mountain roads uh it's just super fun people put in cars that aren't normally in the game like i had uh, somebody made a 2005 forester xt which is technically my old project car downloaded that put it in and it was just really fun to see. I mean, they did they recreated the whole inside. Everything was just absolutely perfect and immaculate. It was exactly where it was. And it was just, it's great. And it's also super fun to see those kinds of things. All of that was free. I just needed to buy the game. It is risky to download to, like, at least mods and whatnot. But there are helpful websites and pretty helpful discords as well. But again, do your research. A lot of this is heavily into research. Take the time to do it. If you're going to invest this much money into it, just take the extra time and do this research on what you want to do. But now you may be wondering why do these cars and these tracks have such a hefty price tag on them just for one item? Um, cars being $11 on iRacing and tracks being $12 uh, is not necessarily common uh, for just one piece of content to be that expensive. Usually it's a whole DLC pack uh, of like several things. Like it's a pack, but... Um, in this case, everything has gotten so technologically advanced nowadays that things are 3D scanned. Things are also researched meticulously by these companies that are putting them into the games. Um, in some cases, their sounds are recorded in, in every shape or form, um, sometimes even damage models if they're allowed, or at least they'll, you know, they'll research their damage models and whatnot. But they just, there's so much depth and authenticity and everything that you see in a lot of the tracks there's the bumps that you would see um like what is it sebring uh, is it sebring for i want to say it's sebring at least the track that's off the top of my head but if i'm remembering correctly it's an extremely bouncy course and i know that that's just you know kind of the thing that it's known for but they recreate it so well that people just they use it for practice, and that's a lot of the thing here. Like, a lot of this is used for practice. A lot of it is used for fun. Like, it's just, it's just how you use it. But again, like I was saying before, you can actually sit in Lewis Hamilton's 2020 F1 car, like the actual Mercedes F1 car, fiddle with everything. You can fiddle with the brake magic and everything. You can do the same thing he did in. Uh... Oh crap! I'm forgetting where he did it in. But you know what I'm talking about. He was in second place. He left brake magic on just right after the restart when there was like two laps left and uh, I think Seb got his first podium for Aston Martin something like that and like his probably last podium sad face he's retiring this season <sighs> oh, I'm gonna miss Seb but after all of this though the summary is it's expensive to get into sim racing realistically it is but there are options there are ways that you can get into sim racing little by little or you can just Go full force. You can just go straight in it. And even then, the secondhand market is there. Like, I'm not going to say or recommend necessarily to go to secondhand market. Um, but from the little research that I have done, 
and from a few testimony that I have seen, at least from some personal friends of mine, they have bought an entire kit, like a full GT Omega kit, a podium wheel and everything. Some like brand new, this whole thing would be anywhere in the range of like three to five grand and someone selling it for eleven hundred dollars. That's including, excuse me, including the shipping. So whether you want to get into sim racing as a hobby, a career, an actual practice platform to go onto real racing, which is a thing, by the way. Shout out to Jimmy Broadbent, Team 87, Praga Cup. Look him up if you don't believe me. Links, everything down below. It's all here. Everything is here. And you can do it. You just got to find a way. And I hope one day that I get to see you on the track. And if you see me, please know Punterino. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I really, really had fun making it. It's probably painstaking to edit it yet. I haven't done that part yet. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. And uh, I'll see you next time. Bye!